Hello, welcome to Lost and Found No More Secrets. My name is Heidi Billingsley Kuiper, and I am the host of the show. I am a genetic genealogist with DNA Angels. DNA Angels is a dedicated nonprofit organization helping people to discover their biological truth. Whether they are adopted, an NPE, meaning not parent expected, donor conceived, or they just never knew who their biological parent is, we're there to help. Join us on today's episode as we explore the powerful journey of one of our very own clients, following their path from feeling lost to finally being found. Discover how they reclaim their sense of identity, proving that one sense of identity is more important than someone else's secrets. Hello, welcome to Lost and Found No More Secrets. My name is Heidi and I am your host. I'm joined again by Laura Schultz. She is a genetic genealogist with DNA Angels and I'm glad to have you back as my co-host, Laura. Thanks, Heidi. I love being here with you. <laughs> I just noticed you're wearing glasses. I don't think I've ever seen you in glasses before. I Yeah, the reading glasses. So. <laughs> You know, getting old, you know, yeah, <laughs> the, the you. middle age thing. <laughs> so today our host is Kiana, our host, our guest is Kiana. And Kiana falls into the category of she never really knew who her biological father was. She was raised thinking that her stepfather was her father, but she was inquisitive and had questions and she probed and she figured out that he couldn't be her biological father. So I would love to bring Kiana up to the stage and introduce her and get started on her story. What do you say? Yep. Can't wait to hear it. Hi, Kiana. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So let's start with the beginning. Let's start about, tell us about your family structure and what it was like growing up for you. Um, I grew up out um, in a suburb outside of Detroit, Michigan. Um, my mother was a one of the big three automotive factory workers. Um, I grew up as an only child, um, was well taken care of, went to private Catholic school my entire life. Um, I grew up thinking that my stepfather was my biological father, and he had died when I was four years old. Mm. So... Um, I was very, you know, um, inquisitive as a child, you know, especially being an only child, being, you know, by myself. And um, I was, you know, looking and looking at photo albums and um, baby book. And it just, it didn't say who my dad, my daddy's name was on there. So that was a question. And I brought that to my mother and my mother told me that it was another gentleman was my father. And um, I wanted to know where he was and, you know, why wasn't my daddy around? Right. And so um, uh, he ended up he ended up working at the at the plant with my mother. And um, she's my well, my mother told me she said that he didn't want me and um, he had told her to get an abortion. Mm -hmm. And when she was pregnant with me. So I was just like, you know, I still wanted to know who my daddy was. And um, then it could test taken and um, he had someone else take the paternity test. This is what her story was. And it was just like, okay, it's just, you know, my mother, that was what she said. And so um, I ended up meeting him. Um, I started to form a relationship with his daughter. Um, how old were you when that happened, when you started to form a relationship with him? Um, not with him, but with his daughter, because he, he was, cause she was, he wasn't with her mother either. It wasn't like he was the prize daddy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, um, I was 13. I was 13 when I met her and, um, I, um, developed a, restarted developing a relationship with her and her mother and her family. And, um, it took time, but they were, they were, they're my family, you know, they became my family. And, um, that's what I knew. I knew that was my, that was my family. That was my sister and, you know, her family, you know, they accepted me and 
I think, I think that her mother knew deep down all along, but she was such a kind woman, mm -hmm. you know, and she knew that I needed um, a mother's love. And she gave me that. She gave me that when I, when I, you know, she, she was, she was, that's my family, you know? Um, so, but it was like, it was always kind of, it took a long time to get there with my sister. You know what I mean? It was like, kind of like a strain, but, but eventually it was just like over years, you know, from 13 to, I mean, I'm not telling my age now, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, more years than I've, I've been here on this planet, I've known them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, that was my family. And then um, my sister and I had, um, uh, uh, we've had a falling out about eyebrows. I'm a licensed esthetician. <laughs> and we had a falling eyebrows. out. Eyebrows are important. <laughs> I know they are. They were beautiful. I did a really good job on hers. <laughs> but it wasn't even about, it was, it was a situation. It was, but it was about some ultimately about eyebrows. And um, it was with her friend and she kept on saying, she kept on saying, no, not my sis, not my sis did that. And I was just thinking, I just felt like I'm supposed to be your sis. Like, that's how I was feeling when she was saying that about her best friend. You know what I mean? Like, I, you should, I should be your sister. You should be having my back. You know right. what I mean? That's how Absolutely. I felt. And so... That made me say, well, wait a minute. Am I really her sister? Mm. Mm. Was this, you know, is this true? Did this, you know, was what he said the truth? Was my mother telling a lie? And um, because I I always, with the DNA test being done when I was like one and a half, um, and it was, I saw the paper. It said that he wasn't my father, but my mother stuck to that. Your you know? mother stuck that somebody yeah. else had taken the test for him. And that's why yes. it was negative. Correct? Yes. 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 So um, I did an ancestry DNA test to find out. Mm -hmm. And um, when I did the ancestry DNA test, um, I was stuck. You know, essentially I had got stuck. I had, well, I had hits on my maternal side, but none on my paternal side. And then I ended up having a match to a, finally got a match to a first cousin on my paternal side, but she didn't know who her biological father was. And so um, we were kind of just stuck for probably, I want to say maybe six to about nine, eight months, about eight, eight or nine months after. And I, um, one day I happened to be on Facebook and I, scrolled across. I was like, um, it was a, a girlfriend of mine who I grew up with and she was doing ancestry DNA and she was just like, Oh my goodness, this is so addictive. Yeah. And I, and I said, and I chimed in and I said, yes, it is. And then somebody chimed in and they said, well, ancestry DNA along with DNA angels helped me find my family. And I'm like, what's that? Mm -hmm. And so they proceeded to tell me who you guys were. And, um, I submitted the, you know, the my request or my application to you guys and you guys had to tell me whether or not you were going to take my case and you did and Laura was assigned as my angel Linda Linda I'm Linda. sorry Linda 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 was assigned as my angel I'm sorry all these L's um, <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> so um she took my case and January, it was like, I think I want to say it was like January 13th of 2023. And my case was closed by February 14th of 2023. So pretty fast. Yeah. You guys were in it. And I knew nothing. It was like, I had absolutely no, nothing, name, photo. My mother never uttered my father's name ever, ever, mm -hmm. ever. Um, I never saw a picture of anything. So, um, yeah, you guys had um, gave me had you had well, it came down to two brothers. Mm -hmm. It was two brothers, and so I knew we knew that one of the brothers had to have been 
my cousin who matched with me who didn't know who her father's um mm -hmm. um so we knew we knew that um it you know we just didn't know which one so um you guys ended up giving me the closest relatives and i ended up contacting who i thought was my brother but it turned out to be the brother of my first cousin's ex-wife say that one more time say that one more time <laughs> yeah. I lost it. I just... it turned out to be the brother of my first cousin's ex-wife was the number because they it was like it was oh like, the okay. oh, so it was the in law okay. it was the in law you, got you, you I was thinking the DNA and I was like wait yeah, no, 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 no. it was just the contact, it was the contact the contact information because yeah. I couldn't because I the other information you know I didn't it uh -huh. didn't you know I wasn't right. successful so they were like no that's that's um because because their last name was Robertson too so it kind of so it was kind of a little bit confusing for me you know what i mean because i didn't know them mm -hmm. so um they were like no that's not that's robinson that's you know they were like that's cole's people and so she was like oh what you want some money or something and then daddy was like shut up you always talking too much and then so she hung up the phone because i bust out laughing and so so she hung up the phone and then the brother texted me and he was like i know it was like i was in a tyler perry episode <laughs> and, so, and so um and so the brother texted me and he was like i'm gonna get i'm gonna i'm gonna connect you with them so um she she you know called them like you have this sister you got a long lost sister out here you know that y'all don't know nothing about and so she sent our photos my picture and my son's picture to them and so they started passing our photos in the family group like text and they're like <laughs> oh she looks just like us yep they yep they look just like us that's a robinson that's a robinson <laughs> So, um, I, one day I well, was, let's, out, let's I, talk about this a little bit. So you have a name, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's between one of two brothers and both brothers, if I remember correctly, worked at the same plant. That no, they didn't work at the, they didn't work at the same plant, but they worked for the same automotive. It's the big one. I'm okay. just not going to, you know, so <laughs> it's, the big one. it's the big one. So, and they have, it was a plant in Wayne and then there was a plant in, it was in Flint, Michigan. So one, my, my father and my mother worked at Wayne and then the other, my uncle worked in Flint at the plant in Flint. Okay. okay so, and your mother's still alive. So tell me when you went right. to mom and said, Hey, I, I solved the mystery. What was her response? Well, um, she was a denial. Denial. She denied it. She, you know, it was like, what are you doing? You know, you, you know, what have you come up with? What is this mess? You know, I don't know what you're talking about. So it was just like, she's still not going to admit the truth. You know, I, I don't day? know. To I make she's still in denial to this day? Well, no, she finally admitted the truth, but she said that I was the product of an assault. Mm. Which I don't really believe because, I mean, I had three dads. It was three different guys. And they all worked at that same plant. Right. You know what I mean? So, I know. And, and we, know. Hear, we hear that. I mean, I. I yeah, it, we it do. It puts us in a tough position because you never want to not believe somebody that, that says that. But you'd be really surprised when all of a sudden, when we say, okay, here is your biological father, and the mom always, not always, but there's, it's often more times than you would think that the moms say that. And I think it's more out of embarrassment and shame more than anything. Oh, absolutely. I, I was born in the 70s, and shame was, I believe, shame was the main contributor to it. My mother, you know, she had two children before me that passed and I know that she wanted to be a mother desperately. Um, she, I feel that she did the best with me with what she, what she had. You know what I mean? I, I had a good life. I was, I was very blessed.
as a child. You know, my mother worked at the, the big three. She made good money. She took well to care of me. Mm -hmm. You know, I always went to Catholic schools. I mean, I had my first car at 15. She was a good mother. She provided for me financially. I just think that my mother, I know that my mother has a lot of trauma that she hasn't dealt with in her own life. And um, I mean, she just, she did the best with what she had. You know, she, she did the best with what she had. That doesn't mean that it's enough. Right. I love that you're saying that because- I, I'm sure Heidi is too. A lot of times, like, you know, someone in your case would be really angry at them. Um, but, you know, you, we try to explain it was a different time and no one knows the circumstances. So, like, I'm, that's wonderful that you're so open with that. It, it's really nice because it's it's not always the case, which is really. But that, but that would be sad for me because. It, well, I agree. <laughs> I, you know, I, I absolutely agree. And you are you know, taking the high road and you're being a big open person. And I, you know, I'm very impressed with how you've handled that. That's great. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yes. I just think, um, I was blessed for my story to turn out how it did. You know what I mean? I, you know, I think, um, I mean, I have, I have family, you know, now that I never had growing up as an only child. I mean, not every single one of them was accepting, you know, sure. but I'll, mm -hmm. I'll take what I got. And I, I, I mean, I'll take the 85% I got, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think a pivotal part in your case in reconnecting with the, or connecting with the family was that cousin Eddie, you re had reached out to Eddie and Eddie was, Hey, you're my sister. So, so let's pick up there and, and talk about how Eddie helped you connect with the family and, and made you feel welcomed. Okay. So there, so we knew that my father was between the two brothers. So mm -hmm. we needed paternity tests to be done established between um, a sibling in order to determine, you know, that's the closest, that's the easiest way. So um, my picture was going around in the family group text and I got a call from a Mississippi number and it was um, Eddie. And Eddie told me, he said that he'd been passing my photo and my son's photo through the family group text. And they were like, well, who's going to call? And he was like, I'll call. You know, she looks, that's us. That's a Robinson, you know. And it's so ironic because, like I said, my me and my sister fell out about eyebrows. The eyebrows in the Robinson is a family trait. It's a signature <laughs> trait. And they were like, when they saw, they were like, those eyebrows, especially my son, they were like, that's a Robinson. <laughs> So he, so Eddie called me and um, when he called me, we talked for hours and um, he was like, send me the ancestor information before we even got off the phone. And um, before we got off the phone, he had already ordered the kit and um, well, he saved me in the phone and baby sister. Yeah. Great. Um, he saved me in his phone, his baby sister, and, um, we were waiting for the results and it was just like, it's just so surreal in a sense, because Eddie and I have developed a bond, a relationship. Like it is like literally telepathic. Like I have to be careful about like thinking about him or talking about him because he will call me and <laughs> like the same for him. It's, it's like, it's crazy. It's like, oh my goodness. Like we have like we have not stopped communicating since um we first met like the well the first conversation when he said that the brothers had a group text every mm -hmm. single morning and um a prayer group text and i was and i was like i want to be a part of that and uh -huh. that that day he added me to the group the family group text uh, i think and this so, would be a good time to bring on your your guest your special guest to the show my brother let's, bring up, let's bring up eddie <laughs> Our superhero. Hi, Eddie. Hey, good morning. How are we? You come. <laughs> Doing great. You look happy and chipper this morning. Always. <laughs> Always. Well, tell us what it was like when you realized that you had this Kiana girl out there in Michigan wondering if you were her brother or your cousin or were you skeptical whenever... Uh, you caught wind of the situation. How was it for you? Yeah, it was. Uh, 
kind of mind boggling at, at, at first, you know, it's like, you know, where is this coming from? You know? And, uh, but once we received some, some pictures and everything, you know, and start looking at, at the resemblance, I mean, you could uh, actually, you know, see all of the resemblance and everything. And it's kind of, you know, ironic because Kiana's father, biological father, we all called him Scott. And one thing we would always, he would always say, you don't need no DNA to determine if, if that person is a Robinson or not, you know. <laughs> I mean that was it. That was his line all the time, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you ended up take, you ended up taking the DNA test, and you came back as a first cousin. So you weren't a half sibling. You came back as a first cousin, which told Kiana that your uncle Scott is uh, her biological father. I know that y'all had gotten really close. To, you know, it takes six weeks to get back the, the DNA results. And I know you all were building a relationship and how did, how, were you upset? Were you disappointed when you came back as first cousins? No, not really uh, uh, upset, but maybe, you know, a little I was devastated. Because, <laughs> oh. Yeah, we had, was we had, you know, we, we, uh, we had developed, you know, this bond and everything. And of course, you know, at, at that point I was really, you know, more concerned about, her and Antoinette, you know, really finding out, you know, the truth about, you know, who was, you know, the father, because my dad, Willie, who is deceased, is an older brother or Albert. We, we, we found out he was Antoinette's father and that Albert was Kiana's. So Albert Kiana, and Scott are the same people. Decided right, people Albert and Scott. Albert yeah, we just call him people. Uncle Scott. My grandmother nicknamed all of her kids, <laughs> all of them. But but anyways, uh, like, like Kiana, you know, she was, you know, really feeling, you know, want to be, you know, belong to, you know, a family and everything. And, and I'm type person. I believe everybody should know who their family is. Bless and you. that's why I reached out to her because of nothing else. I wanted to, you know, help her and right. Antoinette figure out you know, what they had been searching for. So at that point, they needed me. And if you need me, I'm the type of person that, you know, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do what I can do, you know, to help to help you and everything. But I did tell her it was a disclaimer, you know, ain't no, ain't no royalties out here, <laughs> no family heirlooms. You know, I say it's just like meeting the Browns, basically. <laughs> So if you're searching for if you're searching for any of that, I say it ain't happening with this plan here. You, know, you just got some down home folks from Mississippi to deal with. And and most of us are men, so it was really refreshing to see that we had some females, you know, in the family because yeah, too, I had yeah. seven I had seven brothers. That's all oh, I ever known is was seven of us, you know. Yeah. That's all I ever known was six other brothers. And then now I'm 60 years old and I'm discovering that I have a sister. Wow. Have, have you and your sister gotten close? We, we, we do. We do talk occasionally. But the, it's not like, you know, Kiana and, and the discovery because I believe how we really bonded so well is it was a discovery point and she was craving all this information about her family. And it just happens that I was groomed to be the historian of the, of the family. I mean, my grandmother literally spent hours and hours, you know, telling me stuff about our family. So for her and I to connect, I, it had to be God because no one else in the family could provide her with the information that right. she was craving for. So so I had to do what I had to do to help, you know, bring her up to speed. And that's why we have a relationship that we have because what she needed was information. And I was able to provide that and her longing for family, you know, and, and that's, that's why we take into each other the way that we did. And I'm really happy, you know, to be a part of that and experience that and to see Kiana where she is now 
versus how broken she was when we first met. I mean, I, I've shared a whole lot of insight and wisdom, you know, with her because, I mean, she was dealing with some stuff. And I said, hey, sweetheart, you need to get you some counseling. I said, it's worked for me in my life because some of the same, same things that you went through, I've been through uh, those things. Of course, I knew my biological father, but he wasn't he wasn't there. You know, my family experienced addiction to, you know, drugs, alcohol, and that was missing in my family, too. So I'm always encouraging people to, you know, know your roots, know your family as best as possible. And I was just, you know, happy that she was really and didn't stand in that place where she didn't know who her family was and she kept pursuing it. her and Antoinette. I, I applaud them. Had I been in the same situation, could I do and persevere the way that they persevered? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So I was very willing to, you know, help them understand. And, and, and to this day, the same way, you know, and watching her grow so much is just, I mean, it's, it's mind blowing. And I love where she's at now, you know. Kiana, I completely understand. I completely understand you loving on Eddie. <laughs> I, love I, love it. I love it. He's still he said. Eddie. <laughs> Eddie is the best. Eddie is the best. I mean, you know, if it wasn't for him, like I have like this whole entire family, like that I have just like gotten to know all these different, and I'm still getting to know because like he but he was the determining factor deciding factor of which of the two brothers was my father right and so he was like okay you know because when i found out like i said i was devastated and he was like you know kiana you still have siblings and i'm like you know i can't do this eddie he was like your sister said call her yeah. and i was like i can't call her and he was like your sister said call her and i was at my son's recital at his game at a, his school concert so when I got home, I called her and, um, and because all of my father's children by the name, by the way, their names start with K except, wow. except for the oldest, who's a junior. And then, um, then it's another Kiana. I mean, wow. so how know. many siblings do you have from your dad? Well, we only, well, we had, it was with me, it was five until just in August where we just had another brother match. Ooh, and so I had to go back. <laughs> that. Yeah, well, he, he matched. And the, iron, the, the ironic thing about that is in my book, I named all of my siblings with a K, but different names. And the name that I had named my brother like a different name was the name of the brother who we just matched with. So I had to go back and I had to change oh, his wow. name because it really is one of him now. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, let's just say thank you, Linda, for laying the groundwork and the legwork for this new brother sibling because you were able to provide him with answers because of the work that you did with, with Linda. You just talked about your book. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about it? Okay. Um, so I was encouraged. I was deeply encouraged by Eddie um, to Eddie and my therapist <laughs> to write the book because um, it's really my story. It's, it's, you would, I mean, it's unbelievable almost. So um, I wrote a book. It's um, based about, based on my life. It's, you know, it's 75% true and 25% embellished but it's um it's called unexpected family a dna story and um it gives you just an in-depth look at my story and and you know my childhood and how my discovery and my healing generational trauma you know mm -hmm. from not knowing where you who you are and where you come from and the discovery and the family that i am blessed with um, all of these siblings that I have and that I'm developing relationships with, um, aunts, uncles. I mean, I have 83 year old aunt. How old is uncle? Uh, and uncle Bubba is 85, right, Eddie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you met anybody in person? 
Um, yes, Eddie sent for me and my son. He had a welcome to the family barbecue for us. Um, after was it, was it just like on on Medea, where they have an <laughs> outside grill and like kind of sporty, kind of sporty, yep. <laughs> <laughs> we had a we had a soul food family spread. We had everything. We had, <laughs> we had fried fish, ribs, chicken, barbecue. Oh, wow. I'm hungry now. Macaroni and cheese, greens, everything you can think of. You name it, we had it. <laughs> so that was like we went we went down there. Eddie sent for me and my son, um, me and Kai. That was in June of 23. So we had just, we probably had the results maybe like six, eight weeks, maybe, Eddie. Oh, wow. That's soon. Yeah, there about. Yeah. And so um, went down there for, and stayed and got to meet, you know, family and people, everybody, you know, different ones came down. Um. And then uh, we went back for Christmas. Oh. Yeah, and we spent our first Christmas with the Robinsons. It was fun. That sounds like a movie, doesn't it? Christmas with the Robinsons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was fun. And um, I mean, I'm just forming all of these new memories with my family, you know? I mean. What is your um, son? How old is your son? And what does he think about all this? He's 11. He loves it. Makai loves it because it's all boys, even like the younger ones. It's mostly all boys. So like when we got when we went down there in June, he was like, as soon as he went outside, I mean, he had like cousins, little boys and they in the front yard. They're all playing football within 10 minutes of us getting there. So he's even developed relationships with um, his other cousins. They play on um, they FaceTime and they Aww. play Roblox and the games and stuff together. So it's great for him because now his family tree is filled in. You know what I mean? Because and what was a great legacy that book is for him and his future children. You know, I mean, that's like, and he did the, he did the cover. He, he did. did the, he did wow. this cover design. He's an artist. He did this cover awesome. and he also came up with the title unexpected family at 11 years old. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. He's super well, cool. I've got like the best son. He's so awesome. It He's sounds so like awesome. it. Wow. But that book, I mean, what a great piece of history for him to pass on. That We should all write something, you know, <laughs> that's wonderful that you did that. Wonderful. Really wonderful. Thank you. And then the irony about it, like back to what Eddie was saying, he's been, it was seven boys. My son, his name is seven. Oh, wow. His and middle then name is and that there's a significance about today's date, correct? And today's date is my father's birthday. We were originally supposed to have done this two weeks ago. And we had, remember, we had a little hiccup. And I believe that my daddy wanted this to be aired on his birthday. So happy birthday, daddy. And then Kiana's birthday is tomorrow. Happy, happy early, early birthday. birthday. <laughs> Thank you. What a beautiful story. How, how close do you and Eddie live? Is it is it hard for you to get to him? Yes, he's in Mississippi. I'm I'm out I'm in Michigan. Oh wow. Okay. But we just um we actually we just linked up just a couple of months ago in um August. We had uh met in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Oh. And we met some other family members there for um, it was it was unfortunate fortunate circumstances. One of my um my first cousin, his son lost his his son passed away. Mm -hmm. So we but we went down there to support family, you know. You show up that's for your family, right? Yeah, that's what you're uh, supposed to do as family. And so, you know, we went down there and the other my other brother cousins came, went rode with um Eddie, Willie brother did. Cousins. I love that. Brother cousins. <laughs> yes. Eddie said, I'm still his sister. That's still my brother. I love Eddie. First thing, one of the first things he said to me was, he said, I've got a lot of experience at being a big brother. And he said, and I'll never forget. He said that. And what he also said was, I love my family. And he oh. does. Eddie, That's is cool. Kiana still listed as your sister in your phone contacts? Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> I love it. Nice Kiana, have you met your uh, half sisters? Um, I have not met my. Si well, okay, let me take this back. My brother, my one brother, I met him because he's a manager at an auto store. I met him like because he lives in in Detroit. 
I met him. I met him ironically like two years ago. He helped me get a headlight for my car. Oh, you remembered that? Are you serious? <laughs> and I, but I didn't know he was my brother. Okay. When I saw him in the sibling Zoom meeting, I was like, and he said that he worked at that store and he was a manager. I was like, because I don't, I had went to get a headlight for my car. I don't, I mean, I'm a girl. I don't like do stuff like that often. You know what I mean? <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so so I remembered him because I didn't know, you know what I mean? I yeah. mean, so he we um, lost Eddie here, so I'm just gonna take him backstage. I don't know if his maybe his phone died. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So um, when we did our first sibling Zoom meeting and I was like, and he said that he worked where, he, you know, at the at the auto store, I was like, and you helped me get a headlight for my car about two years ago. Wow. That's crazy. Good and thing you weren't like, he's cute. I wonder if he's single. <laughs> That's why it's so important to know who your family is. You know I 100% I mean? agree with that. You know, seriously. Yeah. You know? So I just... I just, you know, I mean, you never know in this world and it's important yeah. to know who your family is. And that's why I'm so mm -hmm. grateful to you guys for everything that you've done for me. You know, um, you, if it wasn't for you, you guys, I would not know that mystery would still be unknown to me. I mean, you have actually, you guys solved multiple cases. Like you filled in so many people's family trees, not only mine, but Antoinette's, my son's. Antoinette's daughter, you know what I mean? And then my brother who just matched with us. Mm -hmm. Had you guys not done this, we wouldn't have known. We wouldn't have, we, he wouldn't have known who his father was. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I would have, I mean, because you know, with the with the half sibling, it'll sometimes show as a half sibling or a first cousin. It can, it can be close in that range. Mm -hmm. Right. So you guys like really solved so many cases for our family. So I am so grateful to you guys. We love hearing that. We we do. For love. what you guys have done. It's, you know? Yes. It's, and, it's, and I know Linda's absolutely. very persistent. She's she's she not going to give up. So I'm so glad that she was able to find so, so many people, their biological truth. Well, in closing, Kiana, tell us what advice you have for someone that has found themselves in a similar situation. They get back their DNA results. They're it's very confusing. They don't know what to do. What advice do you have? Um, I would say reach out to you guys because you guys are going to find out. You guys are going to find out the answer. And I would say get a good therapist. Get a good therapist because this is a lot. It's a lot for you to process. It's a lot for your family to process. It's a lot for these everyone else to process. You know what I mean? And that's the reason why I say I wasn't accepted by it everyone, you know what I mean? But I'll take the 85% that I got. You know what I mean? Well, optimistic, right? Right. Because I mean, you never know what people are going through. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, having a support system and a good therapist to feel validated, you know, and validate your feelings. I mean, it just, I think it gives you a better way of having a more positive outcome and outlook on the whole situation. Okay. Um, so, I mean, just get a good therapist and don't be afraid to reach out. I think that you'll never know unless you reach out. I mean, you've come so far. You've come as far as to the biggest step was to take the DNA test because now it's out there. Now oh, your DNA that. is out there and you're eventually going to get some matches somewhere. Mm -hmm. So if you, if they've gotten to this point and they've gotten to it, to you guys, once you don't be afraid, just right. reach out. All they can say is yay or nay. And you'll be surprised. Right. You'll be surprised. Great what... advice, Kiana. Thank you so much. And and I do want to get your book. I'm very excited to read it. Me too. Uh, I will send it to you guys. Thank you. I'm going to give you, I'm going to take you up on that. I'm going to send you my I address. Send your information. Seriously, <laughs> this is I can do. I Seriously. Here. It's juicy. <laughs> I love it. You like juicy. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and uh, we're gonna put a link to the to to the book in the comments below, so people will be able to to easily find that. Thank you, Kiana. Be thank blessed, you. and thank, thank you so thank much. You so for much. Your thank you for sharing. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Wow, I wish every family had a cousin like that. <laughs> <laughs>
I oh. want Ke- Cousin Eddie. Cousin. Isn't that, uh, what's the show? Cousin Eddie. <laughs> we all need a Cousin Eddie. <laughs> one thing I want to point out, because I, I, I read back in Kiana's room before the show aired, uh, it's one thing that she did that really helps the search angel out a lot is she's not a, she wasn't afraid to reach out to those matches. Mm-hmm. And there are certain cases like her case where it takes the help of family Absolutely. to solve case and so she was like you know linda's like okay well can you reach out to this match and she, you know linda gave her exactly like what to what to say and how to, mm-hmm. to ask and kiana was like absolutely and right. so you know a couple weeks into the case kiana you know was was very instrument instrumental in solving her case because she was not a scared she was not scared to reach out to the family which was huge especially in the cases where we have two possible dads you know like it's, mm-hmm. It just gets so hard. So, right. and yeah. I understand the nerves and being anxious, but man, she did a great job at it. At it, obviously, she did. <laughs> well, we're going to conclude the show. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. I'm always curious to see how far we're reaching. Thank you, everyone, and Thank have a you. have a great week. Bye.